<clears throat> back to kitchen. Kitchen is a wonderful word. Okay, cool. And perms and comms are things that are different. Good. We just summed it all up. And Tegan's not allowed to talk anymore. That's also what we summed up. Okay, good. Um, well, you're allowed to unless I'm, I'm when I'm paused. That's what I just said. Okay. So find the number of permutations of the letters in the word kitchen. So does kitchen have any rep repeating letters or repetition? Nope. How many letters does kitchen have? Seven. Seven. So I'm going to draw how many blanks? Seven. Because each blank thing can only hold one word. One word, that's a lie. One letter. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, this is where it gets a little trickier, so we put on our thinking caps and use them quite wisely. Yeah, you got one on? Perfect. All right. I like your hat. Okay. Sidetrack. KCN. It says it has to be together. It doesn't say it has to be together at the front. No, it just says it has to be together. So it could be at the front, it could be at the back, it could be between some letters, right? It would still be together. Does it say it has to be in that order, KCN? If it has to be in that order, I have one option K, and then one option C, and then one option N, correct? But it doesn't say that. It doesn't say it says not necessarily in that order. So whenever something says must be together, I'm like, cool, I'm going to put it together. I put it together at the front. If it doesn't specify where it needs to be together, I just put it together at the front. If it says it has to be together at the back, I don't put it at the front. That would make no sense, right? But if it just says together, I started with it at the front because I like starting on the left. I think it's because of the whole reading from left to right situation. But my first blank, what letters do I have options for? K, C, N, so I have three. Whoop. Do I have K, C, N again? No, because no, words I have to do what? Draw. Box and hold. Drop a letter. Yes. So I'm going to drop the N. Or I'm going to box it. Then I have K and C, which is two. Then say I keep the C. Then I have K, which is one. And I have multiplication dots. How many letters have I used up? How many do I have left? Four. So I have I, T, H, and E. So I have four options. Box the E. Then I have, then I have, then I have. Do I have to show the work below? No, that's just extra. If you want to show the letters below and you want to show boxing and holding so you don't make a mistake, please. But all they need is the numbers above with the multiplication dots in between. Give it to you. Now, I'm going to tell you right now. People will stop here, and the answer will be there on the test to this. It's wrong. Because this is them together at the front. What have we not done? Them together anywhere else, right? They could still be together. So put your pencils down. I want to explain where they could be. You're not writing this down. I'm just proving a point. So we have this case where it's 3, 2, 1, 4, 3, 2, 1. And these can be any of the other four letters, correct? So another case where they could be together but look different, and the word would look totally different, is if I took these three and I put it between these two letters, correct? So how would I, I would go four, and you're not writing this, you're just paying attention because when you write you sometimes can't pay attention as much. And then 3, 2, 1. Plus, I'm never going to show all these cases every single time. I'll show you a fast one. Okay? I could also put them between three and two, those two letters. Right? It would totally make a different word. They'd still be together. We agree? So we can go four, three, three, two, one, two, one. Then I could go four, three, two, and put it between these two letters. Three, two, one, and one. And then I could take it and put it completely at the back. And it would still form a totally different word. Like if I took all these letters together and then I put KCN at the back, it would be a different word, right? And because they're all cases, I would add them. How many different cases did I get? That are all the same amount, right? Yeah. It would ultimately be the same answer, just five times. Yeah? yeah? So that would stink if you had like a 12-letter word, and then you have to like throw, show, show how many more cases, like nine cases or whatever, however many you're holding together. So, what's a faster way? Well, instead of showing all the cases, you could show it with arrows. So we could say, okay, this is one way, then this is two, could I put it here, three, put it here, four, put it here, five, put it here. Or what I always say is if there's four letters at the back, there's five places it could be, right? It could be in front of those four letters and between all of them and at the back of them. 
So we always times it by the number of cases. And the number of cases is always one more than this number after the hook together numbers, right? So if this is a four here, there's five cases. If this was a seven here, I'd times it by eight. If this was a 22, I times it by 23. There's always one more than that number after the hook together. Because if I have four letters, let's think about it. If I have four letters and I can move it around them, I have one way, two, three, four, five. If I have five letters, I would have six ways I can move it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Right? So it's always one more than this number here. So it's five. Now I know the answer is 720 without my calculator. Not because I'm a genius, but because I can work this down to being six factorial. How could I make this be six factorial? Well, what is this? What's three times two times one? Six. And this is a five. And then this is a four, three, two, one, blast off. Is it not? If I have multiplication all together, this is actually 6, 3 times 2 times 1, then I have a 4, then I have a 3, then I have a 2, then I have a 1, and then I have a 5. Well, if I order that around, that would be 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, blast off, isn't it? So it's 6 factorial, and because I only do math every day of my entire life, I know that that's 720 because I've memorized it. And you will eventually memorize the certain stuff. Do you have to do it that way? Or could you just go? 3 times 2 times 1 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 times 5. Absolutely. I'm showing you this because sometimes that's what they'll give as the answer, is 6 factorial. Okay? Next question, I'm going to start. Most people don't get this one right. On the test even, they forget how to do it. They remember they've done it, but then forget how to do it. So, pencils down. We're going to talk about something totally different than this question. Totally different scenario. I say to you, there are 26 of you, I think. I think there's 26. I'm going to say there's 26 of you. So we're going to commit to it. There's 26 of you. Okay. I want to know how many people are in this school that are not in this class. How many are in this school but not in this class? Okay. So the fastest way, obviously, then, would be to get on the announcements, like get on the microphone and say, everyone, the math, this is left math 30 132 class, is going to count you all. Stay still. Don't move. And then you go down to the science wing, and you start counting all of them, and then you go and they get to the bathroom, you open the door, and you're like, hey, how many of you are in there? Hey, how many of you are in this bathroom? Is someone in the science? And then, and then you walk, and then, then you like go, and then you like, and then you have to check outside, and then you have to ask who's missing for the day, and then like, conundrum, and then you find out how many people are not in this class. Would that be the fastest way? No. What would be the fastest way? And then poof, you have the people not in this class, right? Multiple, multiple can come up with that, like this. Then I ask this question. I ask this question. This question is, the number of permutations, which I'm not going to say permutations. You're going to need to know that, because it's a word. Of the letters in the word kitchen, if the vowels cannot be together. I say the vowels can't be together. And then you guys start making like 87,000 cases where the vowels are not together. Okay, I'm going to put the vowel here and here. Figure that one out. Okay, put the vowel here and here. Figure that one out. Okay, put the vowel here and here. That is the same as telling the school to stop what they're doing and start counting them all. That's literally what you're doing. The slowest method known to math. So what did we do that was quick? Think about that when you get to the test and you're like, oh, I remember doing this, but it's I got a blank. What did we do when we wanted to find people not in this class or the vowels not together? Well, what we did is we found out the total number of people and then just subtracted the people in this class. Correct? So what, how could I liken that to this again? example? I can find the total number of words I can make from kitchen and subtract off what? To get the vowels not together. The vowels together. So I have all the words I can make out of kitchen, and I subtract off all the words from that where the vowels are together, what's left over? The ones where the vowels aren't together, that's it. Don't make 87 cases. You're halting the whole school if you're counting them all. It's the same thing, right? So when you get to this question, think of it how I asked it as the school. Because most people can say, well, total minus the kids in this class, and then you'll have the ones not in this class. Same thing. Total words of kitchen, I can come up with all... Where did I put the Here. I just randomly put them. So I want total number of words that I can make from kitchen, right? And then I subtract off the vowels together. And 
And then what is that going to equal? All the vowels not together words. Right? So if I just want to rearrange kitchen, I have no rules, no restrictions, no nothing. How many letters are in kitchen? Seven. Seven. So I could show it this way. How many letters would I have for the first blank? Seven. Seven. Then? Six. Then? Five. Then? 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 So if I want to know how many words I can make out of a word, I literally just find out how many letters factorial it. Right? So I could just write 7 factorial instead, which is 5,040. Now I have to subtract off the vowels together. We just learned how to do that, right? Instead of KCN being together, now I have the vowels together. Does it say at the front or does it say at the back or does it just say together? Together. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Decide how many vowels are there. Two. Two. So I'm going to hook together two blanks. The E and the I are the vowels. How many options do I have for the first blank? Six. Then? How many have I, do I have left now? Five. Five letters then? Four. Four then? Three. Then? Two. Then one. Then I'm done? Am I done? Does it say vowels together at the front? Does it say the vowels cannot be together at the front? No, it says the vowels cannot be together. So what do we still have to do? Multiply by how many? Six. One more always than this one, right? So if I have five letters sitting here, I can put near one, two, three, four, five, or six spots, right? So it's always one more than this number here. So that's six factorial times two, which is 1440. And when you subtract them, you get 3,600. This one we're not going to do. We're on Friday, so it's a shorter schedule, so I have to skip some. But this one says, if the vowels must be together in the order O-A-E, how would that change it? In the order O-A-E. It would make the first three blanks be what? 3, 2, 1. They have to be in the order O A E. One one one. One one one. It'd be one O one A one E. I know it sounds like a conventional blank. It would be one in the first blank, O one in the second blank, O one in the. That's all the only way it would change. If it said in the order, you would just end up with these put together one one one. Right. How many letters would be left? Orange just has seven letters. How many letters are left? Four. Four, three, two, one, and then done. Does it say O, A, E have to be together at the front? No. So am I done? No. How many places could I move it? Five. And it's 5 factorial, not because there's a 5 at the back. It's 5 factorial because 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. And then this is 4, 3, 2, 1, 5. Well, I can rearrange those because multiplication to be 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, blah, blah. Because of the commutative property of multiplication, right? 3 times 2 is the same as 2 times 3. I can move anything around when it's all just multiplied. I want you to try, um, well, we'll discuss four and then we'll try something. So four says, in how many ways can three girls and four boys be arranged in a row? So how many people are we arranging? Seven. No two people of the same gender can sit together. What do I have to start with if I just don't want a boy beside a girl? In this particular case. Which one do I have to start with, a boy or a girl? Boy. I have to start with a boy, 
If I start with a girl, at some point in time, two boys are going to be beside each other because there's less girls than boys. So I have to start with a boy in this case. I did them in separate colors to prove a point in a second. So how many boys do I have for this blank? Four. Then for this one? Three. Then? Two. Then? Why are they going down by one? It didn't say I can't repeat them. It didn't say I can't repeat them. But did it say I can't repeat them? Indirectly? They're people and you're lining them up in a row, right? If you're lining up people in a row or you're lining up books in a row, you have to leave one behind, or if you don't leave one behind, you're never actually ever lining anyone up. You're like, okay, I'll line you up for four here. Psych, not sitting someone down. Now I have four here. Psych, not sitting someone down. Like, you're never sitting someone down if you don't leave someone behind, okay? And then here, we have three girls, then two, then one. Don't forget your multiplication dots. The reason why I did them in different colors is so you can see that you can go four times three times three times two times two times one times one. Or what does the red make? And what does the blue make? So I could technically just go um, 4 factorial for the red and 3 factorial for the blue. Which is also, I think, in 144. Like 4 times 6. I want you to do the same question. Yep. Yep. But I want you to try it. I'm going to star it because this one gets done wrong all the time. I want you to try this one. Instead of having an unequal amount, which means I have to start with boys, I want you to do four boys and four girls and tell me how many ways. You can do it right down here because we're not doing example five if you want. I have to press this. Uh, so I have eight. So most people, will, most people will have started with boys because we did in the previous example. I kind of set you up. So you'll go four, three, two, one, four, three, two, one. And the answer that's chosen more than the correct one is this one. Four factorial, four factorial. That answer will be there. It's wrong. I'm not done. That is just the cases that if I looked at the people, I could start with boys. However, if I swap that boy out for a girl, would it look like a totally different picture? Yeah. So when you have an even amount, you have to watch yourself. You can have this case, or you could have, or you could start with girls, and it would look totally different. So you get another four factorial, four factorial. So you could either take that and add them, or you could say four factorial, four factorial times two. Right? Do you see how there's that switch that you could happen? If I started with a girl and I did the picture, or I started with a boy and I did the picture, and I handed them to you and I said, okay, now are these different? You'd be like, yeah. Right? They look different. Different patterns. This only happens when you have an even amount of both, though. The other one, I have to start with boys. If I start with girls, I would get double ups beside each other, two boys beside each other. So it only happens when you get even amounts. So if on a test I gave you five boys and five girls, you'd have to remember that you'd have to do two cases. Okay? What is the answer to this? I don't remember. 1,152. Okay, then we're flipping over. Talking about repetition. We're going to go straight to this example of basketball. So it says here, how many different 10 letter arrangements can you make using the letters of basketball? Okay, here's two words, basketball and basketball. Are the words different? You would say no. I switched the two L's. I erased one and put the other one back in for it. Can you tell that? No. So when we haven't until this moment, had doubling and tripling letters. We now do. There's one extra step. That's all there is. When you have doubling, when you have repetition, you have one extra step. You're going to have to get rid of all the cases where the A's, if I swap them, would look the same. The L's, if I swap them, would look the same. If I had to do that on a case-by-case -case basis, that would take forever. There's a really easy way to do it. 
So let's take a small word like cool off the side here for a second. Don't write anything, don't do anything, just put your pencils down. So normally, if I had cool, I would say okay, and I treat like this is 01 and 02, let's pretend I could tell them apart, right? I would have four options for this one, three, then two, then one, which is actually 24. But are there 24 different words I can make from pool? Because 24 counts, it takes into account that pool, but the two O's would be the different if I swap those two O's, right? That would be a different word. So there's going to be all these cases where I have to take them out. Actually, half the cases would have to be taken out because the O's, when they swap, wouldn't count, correct? The easiest way to do this is I treat them like they're different on the top, and then on the bottom, I just factorial however many double ups there are. So if there's two O's, I would just go divided by two factorial. Poof, there's actually only 12 different words. Okay? So let's take a bigger word, basketball. Now, I learned this from tutoring way back in the day. I don't tutor anymore. This is just like probably 10 years ago. A kid came to me and they're like, I stacked letters. I said, that is genius, and I'm stealing it. So I stole it, and now I teach you it. Best way to learn something is learn from other people, right? Learn what they do. And that's why I want you guys to talk to each other. Because someone might be like, well, I do it this way. And you're like, that's so smart. I do it this way, which is so long. <laughs> Thank you, right? That's why in the university, too, you you never want to be the smartest person in this group. You want to be like with like-minded people or have a few smarter than you. Because <laughs> what happens is when you get in a group, to get into a professor sometimes, there's like a line of a crazy amount. If you have a group of people in your class that you kind of talk to, Someone might be able to do this example, and someone else might be able to do this example, and you kind of feed off of each other, honestly, and you kind of learn together. So the best thing to do is not to be a standalone person. Find a couple people in your group that you can work together with. Don't let them all feed off of you, though. Like if there's someone who never does any homework, and they're just coming to you for answers, be like, oh, you're such a nice friend, and then find other people. <laughs> if you keep them as friends, find different people. Because if they're just feeding off of you, you're not getting anything back. It has to be like mutual, right? Like isn't it called um, symbiosis or something in biology and, and the other one's like a parasite? You don't want parasites. What's that? Is it called a parasite? The person feeds off the other people? And then is it is it like, yeah, is it like symbiosis where everyone gets to like, yeah, that's what you want. You just brought bio in. You're welcome. Remember the little tiny bit of bio. Okay, basketball. So what I learned from this child, I was a little bit of a parasite, but I also was symbiotically helping the child, um, is... You do B A S K E T, and then what they did, and I was like, that is genius, something so little. They put the next B underneath this one, and then an A. They didn't do it in different colors. I don't know why I put my pen, sorry. And then L L. It, these should all be the same color. But they stacked letters, something so simple. And you're like, I don't even know why you're stacking them. You stack them because if the moment you stack a letter, if I wrote kitchen, I would just go K I T C H E N, I would rewrite the word. And I'd be like, okay, cool, I just rewrote the word. But basketball, I stack the letters. And stacking the letters gives you a hint. Like, why am I stacking letters? Oh, I have an extra step because I have repetition, right? Like, stacking those letters gives you a hint. So what do I do immediately? I go, cool, I have two Bs, two factorial. Two As, two factorial. Two Ls, two factorial. And that immediately gets rid of all the cases where the B's look the same, the A's look the same, the L's look the same. That's it. That's the extra step. It's really not a hard one. Okay? Some people will say, well, can't I just say 6 factorial? No. Because 2 factorial, 2 factorial, 2 factorial is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. 6 factorial is 720. Dividing by 8 or 720 is very different. So 6 factorial you would only use if you had 6 letters that were the exact same. Does that make sense to you? Because I know what other question I had in high school in my brain right now. Okay. Is there any restrictions on the top? Do I have to have the B's together, or the L's together, or K, K vowels, anything like that? No. So when I have no restrictions, I can just go what? However many letters there are? So factorial. Factorial, right? So it's all the letters, not the different letters. How many letters are there? Ten. So I would just go ten factorial on the top. How can I represent that? I can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I have 10 letters for this blank, 9 letters for this blank, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Because I treat all the letters like they're actually different. Because doing that 2 factorial, 2 factorial, 2 factorial gets rid of the cases where they aren't. It's like the faster way instead of trying to make cases and then take out the cases where they would look the same. 
That factorial just does it for you. It's great. Okay? It's, it's I, okay, ooh, this is a good spot. So what I want you to do, I want you to go to your calculators, every single person. If you have a calculator that, some of you know how to do these already, cool. If you don't, I'm helping you right now. If you have a calculator that charges, go alpha, link, the button right beside alpha, and a fraction pops up. If you have a TI-83, you're going to have to do brackets exactly like this. So if you have a TI-83, you have to go 10 factorial divided by this. It has to look exactly like this. If you don't do the brackets, you're going to get it wrong with the TI-83 because your calculator is bed mass. So it's going to go 10 factorial divided by 2, times that by 2, times that by 2, which is not what you want. If you have the TI-84s, not, not charging ones, you have the TI-84s, you can go alpha, the Y equals button, enter. And a fraction pops up. So you just type it in like a fraction. Okay? So you do the fancy ones, you can go alpha link. If you don't want to do alpha link in the fancy ones, you can go alpha y equals enter a fraction pops up for you as well. So for all the TI84s, the TI84 plus, the TI84 CEs, whatever they are, you can go alpha y equals enter and it'll work, but alpha link is faster. And if you have a TI83, there's no amount of buttons that will get you a fraction to pop up. I apologize. You just have to type it like this. So in a TI-83, it's going to look like this. 10 factorial divided by, you have to open a bracket, 2 factorial, 2 factorial, 2 factorial. Do I have to go 2 factorial, 2 factorial, 2 factorial, or can I just go 2 times 2 times 2? What is 2 factorial? 2 factorial is 2 times 2 times 2, so you don't actually have to type the factorial symbol in if it's a 2. If it's 3 factorial, could I just put 3? No, because 3 factorial is actually 6. So the two factorial one, you can get away without pressing the factorial. Does anyone need help finding the fraction button? Unless you're a TI-83, don't call me over because I cannot get you a fraction button, I'm sorry. You have to type it in like that. Did everyone find the fraction button? If it's a fraction ever, use the fraction button. If you don't use the fraction button, you have to use your brackets appropriately. And you have to make an oopsie. I, I always like when I can make it look exactly like what's in front of my face, right? So I use that fraction button constantly. Okay? All right. What did you get for an answer? So, we're going to look at the word aardvark. The very first thing when I get a word, the very first thing I'm going to do is rewrite it with stacked letters. So, A, A, R, D, V, A, R, K. And so I don't even care what it asks me. I'm immediately going to go 3 factorial, 2 factorial on the bottom. If you use the fraction button, do you need the brackets on the bottom? No. Nope. You're just overkilling it. You can use the brackets, but you don't need them, right? If you have the TI-83, you need the brackets. You will get it wrong every single time. I didn't even read the question. I'm just rearranging aardvark right now. So I immediately put 3 factorial for the 3 A's and 2 factorial for the 2 R's, and now I'm actually going to do some read what the question asked me. It wants the A's must be together. Does it say at the front? Does it say at the back? Does it say in the middle? Or does it say just together? If it says together, we have cases, right? Just like we did before. Aardvark has 8 letters. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. The A's must be together. How many A's are there? Three. Three. So I'm going to hook them together. Now some people will say one, one, one. No. You treat the top like you can actually tell the difference between the letters. Okay? So for this first blank, I have an A, A, A. So how many options do I have? Three. Three. Then I hold one of them. So then I have two, then Four. one. You treat the letters on the top like you can tell the difference. Because the factorials on the bottom get rid of the cases where you can't. Okay? How many letters are left? How many letters are left? Five, then. Four, three, two, one. Do you think this answer is going to be on the diploma and on the test? Yep, it's wrong. I could pick more. What do I still have to do? Multiply the top by 6. Because there are 6 places that I can move these A's. 
front, here, 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 and there. Always one more than the hook together numbers. So your answer for this one is going to be 360. Because the three factorials will end up actually cancelling. It's 720 divided by 2. Yeah, We're going to go to the pathways. So, number three says, how many paths can you follow from A to B following the following grids? So, I'm going to show, put your pencils down. I'm going to show you with paths how you can do it. So, I prove that when I use fundamental accounting principle, it just works. Not that you're just trusting me. Do not do pathways. This is not an outcome. So, what I can do is I have to go from A to B. I'm not allowed to circle back. So, I have one path to here, one path to here. I can walk to it one, one, one. You will not be doing it this way. Then going this way, I have one path here, one path to get me here, one to here, and one to here. I can just walk down. Then I total them. So this would be one and one coming in, so I have two paths to get me here. Two and one, so three paths. Three and one, so a total of four. Four and one, so five to get me here. Five and one, so six. One and two, three. I'm doing this fast so you can't write it. Three and three is six. Six and four is ten of total. Ten and five is fifteen. Fifteen and six is twenty-one. One and three, four, then ten, then twenty, then thirty-five, then fifty-six. Then 5, then 15, then 35, then 70, then 126. So I have 126 paths that I could take from A to B. Only heading to A, or heading from A to B, not looping back. It would be infinite, right? If I could loop, I'd just be. Oh, now I'm going to go to high school. That's going to be different. So it's always working your way there. So that's what you do with pathways. That doesn't come into effect at all in this unit. It doesn't make it, it would not fit, right? So what I do is I say, okay, in this path, I can only go right, 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 right. You can pick up your pencil, right. So I have five ways I could go right. I could go right five blocks immediately, or I could go right, then down, then right, then down, then right, then down, then right, then down, then right. But no matter what, at maximum, I have five right ways I can go. Right? I could go right all the way. I could go right, then down, then right, right, then down, then right, then down. But I have to do five rights to get me there at some point. Now, downs, I have one down, two downs, three downs, four downs. I have four downs to get me there at some point. I could go all right, then four downs. I could go a right down, a right, right down, a right down, a right down. But no matter what, I'm going to have to do four downs and five rights. We agree? So all I do is I treat it like the word der. I have the er. Der. Der, der, der. I have the word der. How can I rearrange der? Well, I immediately go to the denominator because I see I have repetition, right? I have four Ds, so in the denominator I'm going to put four factorial. And I have five Rs, so I'm also going to put five factorial. And then the top, there's no restrictions. So what do I do when I have no restrictions? What do I do at the top? How many letters are there? Nine factorial. Because I could go nine, then eight, then seven, then six, then five, then four, then three, then two, then one. Because I treat them like they're different. You get the same answer. And there's more than one pathway like this one does. You just do each separately and then multiply them because you have to do these and these to get me to be. Not or. You won't add them because you don't do these or these, right? Then you jump in time. You have to do some of these and some of these. So I treat them, I do them completely separate and then multiply them. So this one from in this A box, no matter what, I have to do two rights to get me down to this box, to this dot, right? And two downs. What order I do them in it can change, but I'm going to have to ultimately do two downs to get me to this dot and two rights to get me to that dot. We agree? So I have the word duh, er. So I'm going to have to find that one, and I'm going to have to multiply it by my newfound word, which is three rights, ultimately, and two downs. So my other word is duh, er. It's a little more early. Yeah. Okay. 
and we just do them separately, right? So this one on the bottom is going to have what? Two factorial, two factorials, do I need the factorials, what is the two? No, so I could just use twos. This one on the bottom is going to have two factorial, three factorial. This one on the top has how many letters? This one has five. You type it in and see what answer you get. I'm going to prove that through pathways I can get the same answer. That you don't just trust that this works. And remember, you can go alpha y equals enter, get a fraction, times alpha y equals enter, get a fraction. Just arrow up, arrow down to move through your fractions, right? And I, I think everyone knows this. You can work through previous work in anything but the TI-83s. You can work in previous work by arrowing up, right? Like you can arrow up into your stuff and steal it, right? The TI-83s, you can still steal your previous work. You just have to go second and then um, equal sign, and it'll pull up your previous work. It'll just You just have to do that until it pulls up all your previous work. If you're someone who wants like little tricks to TI-83s, you have one, just ask me. There's other ways you can still do some of the same material. Did you get it? I'm not there. Okay. You should get 60. You should get 60. Wait, check no, I have not. I have not. I have not. 60. Okay. So you would have gone. Okay. So this is your next page of homework. Um, I'm going to post the pages. I'm either going to post the actual textbook or just the pages because you don't have textbooks yet. We're ordering them. But, fun fact, this one's gone. This one's gone. This one's gone. And this one's gone. What else did I delete? This is gone. That I said goodbye to. I fixed this one up. And that. Look how about that shrunk. I always laugh. If I keep all this homework and then cross it off, you're like, wow, that's way less. But if I just only gave you that, you'd be like, oh, it's so much. <laughs> so, so, kind of mind game. All right?